Hey there, welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. This week, or month rather, we're gonna be talking about engines, and specifically, this engine. Let's get dirty. There you go. Today we're going to be taking off the intake and exhaust manifolds. So All right, your intake and exhaust manifolds are held on by screws that look like this. They have this large washer type thing on them because this washer in some places actually spans between the intake and the exhaust manifold and it's able to hold down both. Kind of killing two birds with one stone type idea. I've already got three of these out, but I'll show you all the locations and some of the methods I'm using to remove them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven bolts. Now I'm gonna go through a uh, length of extender you need to be able to fit your ratchet in here, because as you can see, I'm not taking off the fuel rail or the intake valve. Also, I have labeled and taken pictures of any hose or electrical connection that goes on to this assembly. All right, these are 9 16 bolts, and we're just gonna go one by one and explain uh, what type of extender I'm using and or any accessories. Okay, so this is a 9 16 socket, and this here is a, I'm gonna go with two to three inch extender. So for this first one in here, all right, I guess we'll call this bolt number two that spans between uh, both manifolds. I used a U-joint because there is a bump on the intake manifold that prevents us from getting an extender in there. So I used a U-joint to go in there and then I put my three inch extender on and then my ratchet and I was able to pull that one out. This next one I use the three inch extender and the ratchet to get in there. Same with four and same with what I will do with number five. My bolts seem to have been torqued appropriately, meaning that they are tight at first, but then they come off quite easily. The reason for that or the reason why I say that that means they've been torqued appropriately is because a torque spec is how much you're stretching the bolt once it's been tightened. But up until that point, it should be easy to thread in. There should be no issue to thread it in. And then when you go to tighten it, you torque it, which stretches the bolt ever so slightly to a certain specification defined by the engineer that designed it. Ooh, that's dirty. And if that torque spec has been obeyed the entire life of the bolt, it will feel tight right as you take it off and then it should loosen up because the threads uh, won't be deformed or ruined or anything fun like that. Okay, so we've covered bolts two, three, four, five. Now we're going to go into six. Six will be fairly straightforward. We're just gonna keep with that uh, three inch. I'm gonna use a breaker bar because I've been working on this for a while and I'm getting kind of tired. That breaker bar just to overcome that initial torque. And then a ratchet. Remove it the rest of the way. I'm using the extender as if I would a screwdriver just to unscrew that. And it's working pretty well. 
Okay, like I said before, I don't have a bolt number seven for whatever reason. And that leads us to bolt number one. Now I cannot fit a socket in there because of this bracket here for the power steering pump. And I don't wanna take that off today. So we're gonna go ahead and use a wrench. Oh boy. And we're loose. The exhaust manifold is certainly falling off. Oh boy. It's quite heavy. All right. Now, no worries. The exhaust manifold is not going to just throw itself onto the floor. Uh, there is an engine mount there to catch it but lucky for us, right? Okay, remember when I said we were gonna do this without removing the power steering pump? I totally lied. This power steering pump bracket actually bolts into the intake manifold in two places. And you can't get to, you can get to one, but you can't get to both of those places without taking off the power steering pump. So this is a bit more of a project than I originally anticipated, but that's okay. Fortunately, we have a video where we remove the pump and belt as well. You can find that in the engine month playlist on my channel page. These here are your fuel lines. I don't know if you can see that from the camera, but your two fuel lines, they turn into metal lines that go underneath your intake and they're attached to it. So that's something to keep in mind. Don't mess those up. Fuel lines are pretty important. All right, now that you've taken your power steering pump and you have zip tied it up somewhere in the frontal area. In my case, I have it zip tied to the carrier for the air box. You should have four bolts, uh, two that are the same size. And that last one we took out of the back, which rides in that slot, uh, is the same size as the other one from the back just so you're following along. Okay, now we have one bolt and two bolts. Bolts go into the intake manifold. And my assumption is the intake manifold is going to uh, come off once we remove those. Those bolts are 9 sixteenths. I'm going to put a hand under the manifold, take off this top bolt. That bolt looks a little something like this, goes from the bracket for the power steering pump into the intake manifold. And then you have a shorter one just like this, also goes into the intake manifold. Oh yeah! Now that's coming out of there, which is great. Just gotta be very careful. You got a lot of vacuum lines and other things. And my fuel lines are attached to the bottom like I said before. They're attached by a bolt. How fun is that? More importantly, they are attached by an M10 bolt. Looks like this. It's got a pointed end to it. It's pretty cool. Fuel lines are free. Looks like there was supposed to be a second M10 bolt. Uh, so there's supposed to be two. I only had one. Must have fallen off or something somewhere along the line. All right. And we are dripping gasoline all over the place from here. The fuel rail. Wonderful. My favorite. Oh, okay. All right, I had one of my vacuum lines still connected. That's cool. But it found its way off. Tuck that back there. And we have this one here. I didn't take it off because it's going to be a heck of a lot easier doing it up here. Oink. 
We're free. Hooray. Okay. Fuel rail still dripping. All over the place. No, stop. The intake manifold is off. You can see there's the ports where the air would go into the engine and the exhaust manifold is off from earlier. Now the exhaust manifold, you're going to have to remove the rest of the way. And to do that, you're gonna to have to go under the vehicle and there is a plate. You can kind of see it here, the bolt on it. You remove two bolts and this will come out. Chances are they're gonna be fairly seized and or hard to remove. So good luck with that. But I gotta crawl into the car and then we'll rip this guy out too. All right, as for the exhaust manifold, you have two bolts that are easily accessed from the bottom of your vehicle. And those two bolts fix that manifold to your exhaust pipe. Now I have a U-joint on here, which is helping me to get straightened out because this is a drive shaft. And I can just about get the bolts, but the drive sh the U joint really helps me uh, get around the drive shaft and stay on there fairly straight. So it's fairly important. Just two bolts, they're gonna be on there really, really tight. So bring a breaker bar. Also, I found that uh, putting a couple screws back into the engine block from the manifold is quite helpful because the manifold will want to float around as you're doing this. If you like videos like this one, one, you're in luck because the entire month of November, I am doing the complete disassembly of this engine as much as I possibly can and filming as much as I possibly can. It is engine month, tune in. Also, November is not the end of it. I'm gonna continue working on this Jeep and continue producing videos every single week. So go ahead and hit the subscribe, hit the bell next to it so you're notified, of course. Go to my page, check out some of the other playlists and videos. You will also notice I have a rev kit and a Patreon. I don't like plugging Patreon, but a comment told me to do so. So I have one. If you wanna get involved in that, there is a link for that.